John Marion Grant waited to be killed. Executioners strapped him to the gurney, then they injected him with a sedative. John was being executed by lethal injection. It's supposed to be the humane, less cruel way to die. But John began to vomit and shake. It went on for around 15 minutes before he was declared dead. It had been violent and likely painful. I have accompanied six human beings to execution. It's such a fallacy of an argument to claim that you can kill a conscious, imaginative human being uh, humanely. For decades, lethal injection has been marketed as the safe, sanitized face of executions in the United States. But it turns out the science behind it might be wrong. To call this uh, science, the profession of medicine has nothing officially to do with this. First of all, when it comes to capital punishment, race plays an outsized role in who is sentenced to die. In fact, Black defendants are more likely to receive death sentences than their white counterparts. It reminds me of, I'm just going to be honest, mostly Black people being lynched and mostly white people watching on with glee. It's an important disparity to consider when we talk about the death penalty in the U.S. Until the 1980s, the most common method of executing prisoners in the U.S. was electrocution. Take a moment to think about what that would be like. The death is excruciating. It's violent. Some prisoners even caught on fire while being electrocuted. And the horrible spectacle of humans burning alive began to impact public opinion on the death penalty. In response, lawmakers looked for an alternative, cleaner, quieter, less painful method of killing. That's where the idea to kill by lethal injection came from. To keep the prisoner from feeling any pain, executioners would administer three drugs. First, they would inject something to knock the person unconscious, usually an anesthetic or sedative. Second, comes some sort of paralytic meant to cease all movement in the body. And finally, a drug to stop the heart, usually potassium chloride. But here's something that shocked us while researching this piece. The man responsible for coming up with the three drug cocktail he says he acted on a hunch. By his own admission, Dr. A.J. Chapman did no research before coming up with the idea. And Chapman later admitted he was, quote, an expert in dead bodies, but not an expert in getting them that way. His speculation became the legal blueprint for states adopting lethal injection across the country. The idea of lethal injection is that was to create um, a method of execution that would at least outwardly appear uh, to not be cruel. That's Dr. Joel Zivit. He's an anesthesiologist and an expert on lethal injections who says he's agnostic about the idea of the death penalty itself. For a long time, people believed that lethal injection was the best method because it was not cruel, because it appeared to be the same thing as falling off asleep and then dying. But as we saw, that clearly was not the case with John Marion Grant, who was sentenced to death in Oklahoma for the 1998 murder of Gay Carter. And his violent death was not an exception. Before the state killed Grant, Oklahoma hadn't executed anyone in six years after a string of botched killings. And in many autopsies across the U.S., examiners found the prisoner's lungs were filled with fluid. The death here is more akin to death by drowning where a person's lungs fill with fluid and they choke and, and they may have awareness of this and that's how they die. They die of suffocation. Many people who endured lethal injections have suffered long and painful deaths. Lack of training for staff or rushed executions are also sometimes to blame. Hours before John was supposed to be executed, the Supreme Court lifted a stay on his death put in place by a lower court. Oklahoma wasted little time before rushing him into the execution chamber. We may have been sold the myth of the painless execution, but many people on death row know how painful it could be. It's the separation of people from the suffering that allows it to happen. You don't see it. You're not close. It's a secret ritual. It happens behind prison walls. Sister Helen Prejean is an anti-death penalty advocate who has served as a spiritual advisor to death row prisoners. How can you not call this by its name, which is torture? So some prisoners have asked to be killed a different way. 
The vast majority of executions for the last 40 years have used lethal injection, but other methods are still on the books, like electrocution, which one medical examiner said essentially cooks the brain. Still, some say they would prefer that execution method because the electric chair usually takes around two minutes to kill someone. Lethal injection has taken over two hours in some cases. And in certain states, people can choose the gas chamber or even death by firing squad. Death row prisoners joined together to file a federal lawsuit in 2014 challenging Oklahoma's execution protocol. And no state is more infamous for botching executions in Oklahoma. Initially, one of those prisoners was Donald Grant, no relation to John Marion Grant. But Donald was dropped from the lawsuit when he failed to pick an alternative execution method. He definitely was very, very anxious until the end. Prior to his execution, other executions had been botched. Donald's older brother, Joe Robinson, was there to witness his execution. It looked like a... Uh, almost like a movie dead or something like that. Uh, and we were told exactly where to sit, so we were up close, up close. Donald was sentenced for killing Brenda MacLier and Felicia Suzette Smith, two hotel workers, in 2001. After his final clemency request was denied, Oklahoma executed him in 2022. I'll be the last to try to like minimize or explain a way like, my brother's crimes or anybody's crimes. So, I, you know, I am anti death row. I always say that. But I think it is a crime for the state to take someone's life. You know, it's like, do as I say, but not as I do. Media witnesses say Grant's execution was uneventful. But what does that even mean? It's hard to know because states are making it so hard to figure out if an execution goes wrong. For the three decades after legalization, states used the three-drug cocktail with little variation to the original mix. That is, until a wrench in the supply chain and a shift in public sentiment sent states scrambling. In 2011, the sole U.S. manufacturer of a key lethal injection drug stopped production. Which brings us to how states decided to make ends meet using shady legal work. Initially, states borrowed from each other, with California, Arizona, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Georgia sharing their supplies. But it wasn't enough, so some U.S. states started experimenting with new, untested drugs. The Supreme Court has allowed massively experimentation with the states to use different drugs to try to kill people. Like Texas, which changed its lethal injection procedure in 2012 to rely on only one drug, a sedative called pentobarbital. Still, prison officials struggled to procure it. The state's prison employees have even been accused of lying to pharmacies and falsifying documents to obtain the execution drug. In one case, Texas prison officials allegedly claimed the drug was for a prison hospital that closed down almost 30 years before they placed their order. Other states turned to foreign companies to close the gap. But when the European Commission noticed the influx of U.S. prisons buying drugs from European drug makers, it banned the export of drugs for use in execution. And as a consequence of all of these problems, the state in states who do this, instead of opening their doors to public discussion and, and scrutiny, have passed secrecy laws. And so, in fact, it becomes harder and harder to investigate the truth of this. Today, 24 states have secrecy codes or laws on the books to hide those who participate in execution, from the drug maker to the pharmacy to the person who inserts the IV. The lack of transparency is compounded by new state policies that account for incidents like vomiting, contortions, and other side effects. In this way, states preempt calling executions botched by basically listing anything that might potentially happen as protocol. Around the world, executions are declining. And in the U.S., lawmakers in at least 14 states are considering legislation to limit or ban the death penalty. But some states are going in the opposite direction, like Oklahoma, where officials announced execution dates for 25 prisoners. It's just cruel. And the fact that, you know, we're talking one a month. I mean, that is insane. 
In 2022, a federal judge dismissed the lawsuit where Oklahoma prisoners contested the state's lethal injection protocol. The judge ruled that the state's method of killing does not defy the Eighth Amendment and is not cruel. But can state-sponsored killing ever be anything else? You cannot ever identify a human being's worth by the worst thing they've ever done. But see, here's the thing. Once in our minds, we posit or we say we believe that the killing of a human being is not cruelty, then all this happens. 